Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking all about loudness during mastering. Specifically, where should you set your limiter's ceiling for the absolute peak loudness and how much should you push that limiter for the average loudness to make sure that your song isn't too quiet or too loud on these streaming sites such as Spotify, Tidal, YouTube, where people are actually going to be listening to your music. I know that this is a topic that stresses and worries loads and loads of people. It's worried me in the past, but today I'm going to settle a lot of the myths and sort of debunk a few things. And I'm not going to be giving you any rules to follow, but I will go directly to these sites and show you exactly what they are asking for and then how you can match that. So if you're looking for a whole tutorial for mastering, I have one linked here. It's probably one of the most popular on the internet. It's like 20 minutes long. It takes you through the whole process. But right now, let's just look at loudness. So firstly, I'm in FL Studio, but you can use these tools in almost any DAW. Uh, the first thing is that I'm using a limiter. I'm using Ozone Limiter. They all sort of work the same. They sound a bit different, but they all have similar tools on them for ceilings, thresholds, character, stuff like that. I have a free loudness meter, which is incredibly important. I happen to be using the paid version, but the free version is almost identical. This is the best free loudness meter on the market. I've been using it for years. There's a download link in the description. There's no catch. It's really an excellent tool made by an excellent developer. So I'm going to put some headphones on and we'll get right to work. The first thing is that ceiling on the limiter. So it should just be called ceiling. It might be called sort of max output or something, depending on which limiter you use. On Ozone, it's the ceiling here. Now, typically people set it to minus 0.1 or minus 0.3 based on absolutely nothing at all besides their gut and that someone else told them to do it. So who should you trust if half the people are saying minus 0.1, then someone says 0.3, minus 1, minus 2. I'm just going to go straight to Spotify and see what they actually ask for. So in the Spotify FAQ, I'll link this in the description, they say exactly how you should upload your music and what they do to it. So the first thing to know is that if you upload a WAV file, which is what they ask for, they're going to transcode it into a different delivery format. So they're going to encode it to OGG, Vorbis, AAC, depending on where someone's listening, what device they're listening on. And this encoding process needs to be done as successfully as possible to make sure there's no distortions, artifacts, or issues with your audio. I'm sure you've maybe done it yourself or heard someone uploaded something to Spotify that sounded great. You played it back on Spotify and it doesn't sound the way you put it. There's distortions, there's crunch, there's something wrong with it. And the second thing to take into consideration is that Spotify has loudness normalization, which means if you put a louder track in, it will just turn it down a little bit. If you put a quieter track in, it will turn it up, potentially apply limiting to it to get it a little bit louder. So with this in mind, what they're saying is that if you don't want your track to be turned down, now you can push it much louder than this. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't want it to get turned down, you should have an integrated LUFS value, which is just a, a loudness measurement of minus 14 dB. That's overall loudness, that's average, and a peak loudness of minus 1 dB true peak. And if you push your master much louder than minus 14 overall, then maybe keep your peak to minus 2 dB true peak. So people online that are telling you, just push it to minus 0 0.3, minus 0 0.1, these are either people that don't quite know what they're doing for mastering for online streaming, or they're employing advanced tactics and techniques so that the distortion that occurs to their track is minimized. But for most of us, we're not that advanced. So it is better to at least start at minus one dB. That is what they are asking for. And this will make sure that yours encodes best. And you must engage true peaks. And I'll show you why right now. So say I take the ceiling back up to minus 0 0.3 dB. You'd think that it would limit it there and that would be it. But let's look at this loudness meter, specifically the short-term max, which will be in this box here. I'm just gonna play the loudest part of my song. The true peak max is 1.1 dB above zero. So when we upload it to Spotify, it's going to clip and there's not really anything we can do about that. If I engage true peak and then play the loudest part of my song, it's much closer to the actual value the limiter says it will be. So the first thing I'm going to do is take that down to minus 1 dB. This loudness meter gives you all sorts of analysis for the short-term loudness, integrated loudness, your dynamic range and whatnot. So don't get too bogged down in this stuff right now. But there's presets, whether you're mastering for Spotify or other standards or YouTube. Right now I'm on Spotify. So it's got that average at minus 14 already labeled there for you. 
And whenever there's a true peak that's higher than Spotify recommends, there's going to be a red line up here and this is going to be red. So let's start with minus one and let's just see what happens on this now. You press this X to just sort of set all these back to zero. So even though it says minus one, it's actually a true peak of minus 0 0.9 compared to this loudness meter, and I trust this loudness meter. It's an incredibly, incredibly accurate tool. So what I'm actually going to do is take the ceiling down just a little bit more for this mix, minus 1.1 dB, and see what that says now. So obviously I'd want to check over my whole mix, but that says minus 1, and that's the very loudest part of my song, so I'm sure it's fine. And a quick word for anyone worried about that, I used to worry and think that I'd want to push my ceiling as high as possible so it would sound louder and sound better. I can guarantee you, if your mix doesn't sound good, if your master doesn't sound good at minus 1.1, pushing it up to minus 0 0.3 will not suddenly make it sound good. I absolutely promise you that, just sort of man to man, you do not need to push your ceiling higher in the hope that a listener will be more impressed by your song. It's not the way people consume music. You know, Spotify is going to, Bring the loudness so that it matches everything else and they're just going to set the loudness you know they'll be driving along they'll just turn their volume up in their car they'll rock the volume jogger on their headphones and that extra 0 0.7 db makes no difference but the only difference it will make is to distort your song when it's on spotify which a listener could pick up on and notice that they don't actually enjoy you don't need to push your ceiling higher to make your song sound better. So now it's time for part two of the video. How much should I push the limiter? How much should I squash my song to make sure the loudness is correct? So I'm going to use the Spotify um, guidelines, but I'm also going to use a free tool called the Loudness Penalty Analyzer, which is fantastic. I'll be back to that in just a minute. They say that they'll apply loudness normalization to your tracks. So what this does, this doesn't discriminate against us independent artists. You know, I've released tra so many tracks on Spotify that this does not discriminate against us. I used to believe it did. It was turning my music down. It's, it's not fair. This just creates an absolutely level playing field for all of us and makes sure that listeners are not getting damaged hearing from one track being super loud and the next being quiet. If your track is quieter than minus 14 dB integrated LUFS overall, that's an average value, they're actually going to boost your track and apply their own limiting. So what I would say is get it up to that value using your own limiting because I wouldn't trust their limiting to do a better job than you can do. But once you pass minus 14 LUFS, which is loudness units relative to full scale, it's just a different way of measuring loudness, push it as much as you like the sound of. So in my case, I often like pushing it a couple of dB or a couple of LUFS louder because uh, I kind of like the crunch that it gives it, the kind of glue. But you don't need to if you don't like the sound of that. So I'll demonstrate here on my loudest part of my song. You can see that the short term LUFS is at like minus 8 LUFS, integrated minus 10. So this would be turned down quite a bit on Spotify. But over the whole song, if you notice at the start of my song, it's, been a year it's actually a lot quieter. If we can never be friends. So if I stop there, you know the start of my song has short-term LUFS minus 17, which is below that minus 14. So overall, I might be closer to the minus 14 than I think. So set the limiter to the point where, where it's, you know, it's pushing the minus 14 at least, and it sounds good to you, and then export a file, okay? And then once you've got that exported file, go on to loudnesspenaltyanalyzer.com drag the file on here. It's a free service. Just drag your file on here. And what it will do when you've done that is it will show you how much your song will be turned down. This is why it's called loudness penalty. So what penalty will your song get on a streaming site? So the mix I had will be turned down by minus 4 dB on Spotify. I then exported a louder version, put it into this tool, and it says that on Spotify I'll be turned down minus 5.3. Now these are relative values, but you can't guarantee that this is absolutely correct, but it's pretty accurate. And what this means is that it gives you something actual, you know, something tangible, something that you can look at and use as an analysis tool. So after I exported the two versions, one with a threshold here and then one that was louder with a lower threshold, what you can do is then just drag them into your DAW like this. So in this case, I've got uh, a loud one and a super loud one. This one underneath is a little bit more crunched. And then you can send them to your mixer. So I've sent this to track one, this to track two. 
and online it said this would be turned down 4 dB, the first one, and the louder one would be turned down 5.3 dB. So back in my software, that's what I've done. I've turned one down by 4 dB, and I've turned one down by minus 5.3. And now, if I turn off my mastering effects, so I turn off that limiter and, and whatnot, so I can listen to them the way they would be on Spotify, at the same loudness, and see which one I prefer the sound of. And they're both actually driving pretty hard. There's quite a bit of crunch and distortion in it, but this is sort of the take home message of this video is that once you get up to that loudness, you can just export lots of different versions, then match their level, match their, their gain, and then just see which one you actually prefer the most. And then, and then just choose that one. There's really nothing too much to stress about, I suppose. There is one more tip that I want to give at the end of this video, but be sure to check with Spotify, check with YouTube, keep checking before you master something and, and see what they're actually asking for, because these standards and values, they've changed a lot over the last five or six years, and they're likely to keep changing. And it's nothing to be stressed about. You've just got to sort of keep with the times and just stay on top of it a little bit. Now, for those of you that are really obsessed about loudness, I would just try to reassure you that you shouldn't try to get this by pushing your limiter louder. There are, there are many, many smarter ways to affect the perceived loudness of mixes. A lot of the time you hear a song on Spotify and you just think it sounds so loud. And it's because there's some really clever mixing going into it to make it sound loud. The loudness really comes from the mixing. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do. The first one I would recommend looking at is tonal balance. So if I open an EQ, tonal balance is the distribution of the energies and frequencies in your mix. So if your mix typically has like kind of lo more low end, less high end, it's going to sound quieter. So if I play this, it's going to sound a lot quieter than a mix with more top end like this. So those are some quite dramatic changes, but you can see that by adjusting things in your mix, you can make a track feel so the perceived loudness can increase quite a lot. The second thing to look at is sort of macro dynamics. So making a verse slightly quieter than a chorus, it's going to make the chorus feel a lot louder. The next thing is looking at your vocals. So I've heard a lot of artists doing this. It's something that I'm a little bit apprehensive of, and it's lowering the vocal level a little bit more than might be normal in the aim that people have to turn the track up to hear the vocals, and when they turn the track up, all the instruments and the drums become louder, and then the track is loud. So that's something to potentially experiment with, but be careful with that one. And lastly, look at saturation in your mix. So adding, you know, tape saturation, tube saturation within the mixing phase or in mastering itself. Subtle saturation and distortion throughout the whole track can make the track a lot more harmonically rich. It can add to the perceived loudness an awful lot. Adding saturation and distortion across a mix is very common in the industry. It's something that a lot of people do. Even if you're just blending in two or three, five percent on certain tracks, you will hear the difference. And it might be a good difference. It might be a bad difference. Try not to stress out about it. Learn the loudness tools you've got. And remember that these loudness uh, normalization rules and such, these are put in place to make this equal and fair. They're not trying to discriminate against you as an artist. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in the next one too. Bye for now.